Now, if you haven't been living under a rock for the past few years, you're probably noticing that the job market isn't the best right now, especially for tech jobs. LinkedIn just laid off nearly 700 employees. Qualcomm is planning to cut more than 1,200 jobs. Google, Amazon, and Snap are among the companies continuing to downsize. Units affected, they also include hardware, engineering, ad sales, so far, last night, CEO Sundar Pichai told his workforce to expect more cuts. Obviously, there are a ton of reasons for this, but in this video, we're going to focus on the things that you can control, such as uh, your resume and how the ATS scan reacts to it. Most people aren't aware that over 75% of applications get rejected during the ATS screening process. This could be due to the bad eligible content, the layout, the design, the format, or many other reasons that can all be tied back to the resume. So if you're getting rejected a bunch of times or not getting any interviews or callbacks, chances are the problem is with your resume. In this video, I'm gonna go through step-by-step -step on how I would create a resume in 2024 to successfully get interviews and hopefully land a job. So if you've been paying attention, you'd probably notice the word ATS scan being thrown around. ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System, and it's a system that many companies use to track their applications. If you notice, when you fill out a job application form, you probably have to answer a couple questions. Generally, those questions and a couple other keywords from the job description will determine if you get a callback or not. And that's exactly where a good resume comes in. If you want to learn more about ATS and how they work, Beam Jobs has a ton of resources on it. I highly recommend checking them out and spending some time, you know, learning the ins and outs of these tracking systems. Now, to create a good resume in 2024, I like to go over to beamjobs.com and use one of the hundreds of templates they offer for different careers, fields, etc. I personally like to use the resume templates from the IT and engineering industries. I noticed that that worked better for tech jobs. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the senior data scientist resume template, uh, but don't worry, you don't have to be a senior data scientist to use this template too. I don't know, I just like the layout, the design, the format, the typography, the line spacing, etc. And I know it's ATS friendly, which helps a lot. All right, once you've found a template that you like, you can move on to customizing the content to fit your uh, personal skills and also to match the job description of a job you're applying for. You'll notice that you can upload your existing resume and it'll port over all the information, which is pretty neat. You can also make a resume based on your LinkedIn profile if you've optimized it enough. Also, a video on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile is gonna come out soon, so stay tuned. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do everything from scratch, so stay with me. Personally, I like having a separate Google Doc with all the necessary information such as, you know, skills, languages, tools, framework, etc., that I've used for previous jobs or school or projects, etc., uh, just so that I can port them over to my resume as needed uh, smoothly and efficiently. You're gonna to wanna to use the content here to fill out the five main sections of the resume, you know, the skills section, the education, the work experience, leadership experience, objective, and contact information. I know I named a couple more than five, but uh, depending on how big your resume is gonna be, which I recommend it to be one page or less, uh, you're gonna to wanna to fill out those sections accordingly. Don't worry about the orientation of these sections for now, uh, just fill them up and later on you can rearrange them. A lot of people also tend to ask me what email to use. I don't think it's too serious, but if you're an active student looking for an internship, uh, I personally think using your school email might be uh, advantageous for yourself. Or otherwise, if you have a professional email with a you know personal domain, feel free to use that too. I think it's more uh, professional over a personal you know Yahoo or Gmail account. Uh, so yeah, just take that into account. Also, make sure to display the title of the position you're applying for at the top of your resume. This is super important and relevant uh, for the ATS scan as it looks for keywords such as the title of the job you're applying for in your resume. In terms of the education section, depending on where you are in your career, uh, I personally recommend keeping a college level experience or higher uh, on your resume. Uh, maybe don't keep high school level experience there unless it's the highest level education that you have. Uh, you can also add on certifications and courses and stuff like that that you've done uh, on the side during school years or during work just to showcase your skills for those specific uh, you know, unique skills that companies are looking for. I also like to include relevant certifications, boot camps, courses, etc., uh, just so that the ATS can and recruiter can notice that or pick that up uh, if it's relevant, uh, especially if I have space to burn. I also get a lot of questions about graduation date on whether you should uh, display that on your resume or not. I'm pretty 50-50 on it. I notice a lot of application forms require you to put your graduation date uh, in there uh, anyway, so uh, it depends on you. I personally keep it off my resume uh, because I've noticed some bias or you know discrimination towards my age, which they can you know directly break down based on my graduation date. So I keep it off my resume, uh, but it's a personal choice. I don't think it matters too much. Also, while we're at the education section, you can go ahead and display some achievements if you're proud of them, uh, such as you know honors, achievements, scholarships, Dean's list, President's list, uh, etc. For tech jobs, I personally like displaying stuff like hackathons, you know, open source coding projects and contributions, stuff like that, because those are more attractive to bigger companies. I noticed that dollar grant amounts were pretty attractive too. These small achievements can be very attractive for companies when you're looking for internships or apprenticeships. Uh, however, after that, if you've already graduated, I would take them off my resume because it's not that appealing anymore. I personally think that real estate can be better used for experience or relevant projects or skills. Oh yeah, by the way, relevant coursework is a great way to showcase the formal education you've done for 
for the required skills a company is looking for. So I would put that on my resume uh, if I've taken certain classes like machine learning, you know, data structures and algorithms, stuff like that, uh, just to showcase companies that you're able or capable of, uh, you know, tackling those harder or more complex problems. For example, if you're interested in data science and analytics, talk about some of the projects you've done for school or, you know, on the side that display or showcase some statistical tools that you've used, maybe SPSS, SAS, or programming languages that you can showcase uh, with skills such as, you know, aggregation, um, you know, data manipulation, you know, uh, formatting data, cleaning data, uh, processing data, you know, even using machine learning, uh, stuff like that, uh, that, that really showcases and sells you to companies. So make sure you use that for your resume. All right, the next section is arguably the most important one. It's the professional experience section. In this section, you're gonna wanna put your best foot forward and display the most relevant experience you have towards the job you're interested in applying for. One thing I wanna note is the location. I personally noticed that, you know, certain international students might have work experience coming from their home countries and uh, certain companies might have red flags or bias signs towards that, uh, you know, international experience because, you know, they might assume that you don't have any work authorization in the country you're currently uh, studying at. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe, you know, if you work remotely, put a remote sign instead of, you know, a specific location, just just stuff like that that, that can help you out, you know, to, to get past the ATS scan and move on to the interview stage. Also, if you're following along, I just love how Beam Jobs displays your live resume score and allows you to view live changes on the side of the page at all times, which is pretty sick. In case you made a typo or something, you can just fix it over there uh, pretty quickly uh, with no hassle at all. When it comes to writing bullet points for your experience section, I always recommend following the XYZ format. That is did X using Y resulting in Z. You can also shuffle the sequence by talking about the result first, then you know what you did and how you did it. The point here is just to quantify your work to bring it to life and make it more meaningful and immediate in terms of impact that you've done for a specific company or organization so that your employer or future employer can you know absorb that value and you know make you a better choice in your head. Percentages, dollar revenue, and growth points are big metrics that companies look for, so keep that in mind when you're structuring these bullet points. If you are stuck when you're coming up with bullet points, you know, for your experience sections like I did, Beam Jobs provides a number of examples for you uh, for that specific job you're applying for just use that as reference and craft it or, or tweak it to fit your experience specifically in terms of uh, you know structure and ideas of what models or you know tools or frameworks or languages or skills that you use um, you know I like I like to use that as a reference when I'm making my bullet points just in case I forget how to format it or forget a specific tool these examples that beam jobs provide are all based on you know tried and true methods that work for other people so feel free to use them for yourself just make sure the experience is relevant to you now the next section is the skill section which is probably the most underrated section from eye tracker studies done on recruiters looking through resumes within the five to six seconds they spend on each resume quite a number of that time is spent looking over the skills that is why it is super important to tune and optimize this section to fit the keywords listed on the job description i personally like structuring my skill section into three different subsections including the programming languages analysis techniques and also tools i think these three subsections work best for me and my specific interest in the tech field but feel free to look around and figure out what works best for you lastly we're going to go on to the objective section I like to think of this section as your personal mission statement. These two short sentences are meant to sell you, so make sure you structure them in a way that displays value and also explains why you're credible. I like to use strong words here and potentially certain key metrics and career highlights. Remember, the skills and objective sections are probably the two easiest sections to change uh, and tweak to fit a specific job description. I think it's okay to use technical jargon and big words on your resume. I noticed that it might impress certain recruiters and also it might match certain keywords that ATS scans look for. However, it is crucial that you're able to back this up provided that you get an interview or a callback. Once you're done with all this like I am, you're able to get a holistic score on your resume with feedback on what you can improve on. I personally like using this feedback to improve certain skills, keywords, etc. And I like to aim for a score of above 90%. You can also arrange each bullet point and section to an order that you're happy with. Personally, I recommend to put your strongest sections first. If you're a student with little to no experience, I recommend putting your education sections first, followed by your skills or work experience. If you don't have any relevant work experience, I recommend picking a resume template that can showcase your project instead. My personal resume layout starts off with my contact information, then my mission statement, then the skills and professional experience. Lastly, my education section. I think that works best for me with my strongest points at the top and my weakest points at the bottom. If you come from an Ivy League school or a super big name school, maybe putting your education section at the top will help you out. I personally think my work experience and my skill set uh, can sell me better than my education section can, so I display it that way. Also, to those of you who like preparing cover letters for your job applications, all you need to do now is copy and paste your job description into Beam Jobs, and it'll take care of the rest for you. What I like about this tool specifically is that they do all the hard work for you. You can create a resume and get a score and suggestions on what you can improve all in one specific tool. You don't have to go on and look for an ATS scoring uh, you know, tool or template or website uh, to help you, you know, understand your score better and give you feedback on what you need to improve. 
If you've watched any of my previous videos surrounding resume tips, you'll notice that line spacing, format, design, layout, etc., all play a part in passing the ATS scan. And I love that Beam Jobs takes care of all that for you, so you can focus on what matters. That is building your skill set and you know making sure your resume content fits that uh, job description specifically. It's essentially a one-stop shop for everything you'll need resume related. You know, you get your resume score, great ATS friendly templates, uh, auto-generated cover letters, and so much more. I also mentioned in some of my previous videos that you know depending on the job title, description, etc., you'll have to cater a specific resume to pass that ATS scan for that specific application. And I love that Beam Jobs makes that process so easy for you. They literally provide hundreds of resume templates for any industry you can think of. For example, like I did in this video, if I'm applying for a data science job, all I need to do is move the content over to a new resume template that has been tried and tested for that specific job title. Obviously, creative industries might require more creative layout and traditional industries might require more traditional resume. With that being said, thank you so much Beam Jobs for sponsoring this video. I've been using their tool for a while now, especially when I was actively looking for jobs and they've been a tremendous help. Please check out the link in the video description below if you're interested. Beam Jobs offers over 150 free resume templates for your job search process to make your life so much easier. If you guys are currently looking for an internship, feel free to check out my internship guide video for how to land an internship in 2024. I know it's super rough out there right now, but if you stay persistent and resilient, I'm confident great things will come your way very soon. Tools like this are meant to take out that heavy work needed to even talk to recruiters and land a job, which is why I recommend taking advantage of them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. I also recently launched a Discord community for those of you who are looking for opportunities in the tech and data field. I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.